Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back to the shop, everybody. Hope you're all having a fantastic weekend. My name is Andy with Bulwark today, and this week we're getting the transom on the Bertram 100% prepped and ready for layup. We're also getting all of the fiberglass cut so that is just ready to go, as well as we're going to cover some tips and tricks when we're working with 1708 so that we don't shoot ourselves in the foot by accident, of course. So with that said, let's get started. So the material that I'm working with here is what's called 1708, which is a biaxial glass. And what exactly that means is that 1708 is, is essentially comprised of three different layers kind of stitched together. So you've got one layer running at this direction, another layer running at this direction at 90 degrees to so the first, you know, so you've got your X and your Y, hence biaxial. And then on the back end is just a little half ounce piece of chop strand matting, which really, in all honesty, doesn't do a whole lot as far as strength or stiffness but it does uh, hold on to the resin, which overall helps to ensure that you're not gonna be getting a dry layup. Now, my overall goal here is to accomplish two things. One, I'm looking to get a certain thickness of the overall laminate when it's all said and done in as few layers as possible. But kind of the flip side of that coin is that I also wanna make sure I'm using a material that is gonna be fairly easy to work with. Now, there, 1708, it's a, it's kind of a, it hits that, that sweet spot between you know, workability and thickness or strength and stiffness. Now, there are materials that I could use that it would help me get that given thickness faster, such as like a woven roving. The downside of that material is that it is extremely, st it, it's stiff, it's hard to work with. Uh, especially when you're talking about using it in an application where you, you've got a lot of detail going on. Uh, it, it just, it would be a nightmare to try and use uh, woven roving on something like this transom. Now 1708, because of the way that it's stitched, you know, with the material running at 90 degrees, it's very pliable, it's easy to work with, and because also the way that it's stitched, when it's all wet out and cured, it is extremely stiff and stable. So as far as the material that I have prepped here, I have all of my tabbing down along the bottom here, so I've got some 6 inch wide, some nine inch wide, and then finally some 12 inch wide material. And then I also have four layers of what's gonna be going over the main face of the transom. Now you may have noticed that when I was cutting out the four layers of face material that I was cutting it shy all the way around by about half to three quarters of an inch all the way around. And there's a reason for that. 
And the reason for that is because 1708 behaves differently depending on the orientation in the way that the material is being worked. Now, just as a real quick example here, uh, think about when you're wetting this material out. You're using a roller, well, at least I'm going to be using a roller because of the size of the area. But I'm, you're, you're going to be using a roller and you're, you're trying to force the resin down into the glass and all the way through all those three layers. Well, so as a result, you're going to be using a fair amount of pressure on the roller to try and work that resin into the, into the fiberglass. Well, when you're doing that, depending on the direction that you're, you're rolling it, you're also stretching this material somewhat. And uh, 1708 is a lot more stable in one direction versus the other. So, for example, when we're talking about the width of this roll, the way that, you know, that it, it came off the roll, across its width, you can easily pull it apart. In what meaning that it will stretch a fair amount as you're working that resin into the glass. Now, this material on the length, so going down the length of the roll, it's a much different story. It's much more stable just because of the way that the stitching is run on this, uh, on this material. So this, so lengthwise, this material is very stable, but widthwise, you can just sit here and pull it apart all day long. Now, what I'm trying to avoid here is while I'm wetting this material out specifically on the face, what I don't want to have happen is after I've got it all wetted out is for it to have that face piece extend beyond the edges of the kusa because then I'm going to have a piece of glass that's going to be, you know, half inch, quarter inch, eighth of an inch, just kind of hanging over the edge. There's no way that that's going to be able to uh, conform to that little bit of a radius I'm going to be putting on here in a little bit. So by cutting it short, all the way around, that's gonna, I'm hoping that was, I cut it shy enough that it's going to account for a little bit of stretch, uh, but hopefully just enough to take it to the very edge of the kusa and not take it over. So with all the fiberglass prep, now it's time to switch gears and head over to the transom and make sure that I've got every aspect of that fully prepped, meaning I don't want to have any excess epoxy hanging out, any little bumps that's going to prevent the, the glass from being able to lay flat. Just make sure everything is thoroughly sanded, any excess material is removed, and I've also got some shaping to do. I'll show you what I mean. All right, now shifting gears up here, there, there really isn't a whole lot that has to be done, but there is some work that does need to be done. For example, all along the top here, any of this excess, you know, if I try and put in a fillet and lay glass on here, it's just gonna hold the glass out. So this needs to be ground down flush to the back of the transom. And that kind of pretty much, that pretty much carries through all the way around. Now I do have some shaping to do down in here. This is going to be a little bit tricky to get at. Uh, I haven't quite figured this one out yet. But looking across the top, again, a little bit more uh, excess that needs to be kind of taken down. Uh, same thing there. And pretty much all the way around. So in all, I don't think that's going to be all that bad. I'm going to use a little one and a quarter inch belt sander and yeah, I should make pretty quick work of that, maybe 15, 20 minutes give or take. Now, there is one thing that does need to be done and it's all going to be handwork, which means it's going to be really itchy. <laughs> but that is I need to come in by hand and break the top edge of the of the kusa all the way around just to make it a little easier for the glass to be able to kind of round over and conform to the surface. And what I'm talking about there is just breaking this edge. So putting a little bit of a round over, maybe a quarter inch maybe a little bit less, but somehow I, I need to break this edge. I cannot have a hard 90 here because the glass will absolutely not wrap that hard of an angle. So, but even that, I don't think is going to be all that bad. Uh, Kusa, it's a foam material, uh, so it should sand fairly easy, even by hand. But it's still not going to be fun, but whatever, it is what it is. It's still not going to take long. So with that said, I'm going to mask up, uh, get this stuff knocked down, and yeah, time to cue up the music again. <laughs>
All right. So now, when we're talking about the resin, uh, we, there's, there's a few things that we need to kind of think through here. Uh, when you get down to it, the, we're going to need the resin to do two things. Obviously, one is going to be to wet out the fiberglass, but also two, we're going to need that same type base of resin in order for creating the fillets uh, for, you know, to allow the glass to wrap down and around back onto the hull. Now, we have a few options here. I mean, obviously, I could use epoxy. Uh, epoxy would work great for this. It would. Uh, I could use vinyl or vinyl ester resin, although it's a good resin. It's just not a good resin for me. Uh, it's just it's got too short of a shelf life, and it behaves very very similar to a, to polyester. Uh, but just because of the short life, and it is more expensive, it's just although it is a good option. Like I said, it's just not a good option for me. And lastly, it's going to be polyester resin. Now, there is one advantage in this particular situation that polyester resin has a real major advantage, at least for me, and that is the ability for laminating. And by that I mean I can, because I don't know how long it's going to take me to get all of this material laid up. It may take two days, and I might be able to get it all done in one, uh, but if, had to go, if something goes sideways on me and I got to take two days, maybe even three, uh, using a polyester resin, specifically a laminating polyester resin, gives me a lot of advantages because then I can, I can walk away, cool off, <laughs> and come back the next day and I don't need to do any sanding. I can just go right over top of it without having to do any additional prep. So for me, that's a, a, big, that's a big advantage on this, especially given the size area that we're working with and the potential for things to, you know, in certain areas to kind of go sideways on me. All right, and I don't know if this is going to make it in there or not, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so now when it comes to using polyester resin for, I guess, repair and modifications, I know there's going to be a camp of people out there that says you never use polyester resin, you always use epoxy no matter what. It's just take it as the Bible. Well, I disagree. I, I, I couldn't disagree more. Uh, it is true that epoxy does bond stronger than epoxy, or epoxy bonds, strong, uh, secondary bonds, stronger than polyester resin. However, if polyester resin still has a bond strong enough to do everything that it's going to be sub subject to, it kind of becomes a moot point. Now, if this were something, a major hole below the waterline, you know, that might be something different. Epoxy there does have some advantages, you know, being used below the waterline because of osmosis and water permeation. And I mean, there are some advantages, don't get me wrong, but it shouldn't, in my opinion, it shouldn't be held as like Bible to, uh, to use, you know, anytime you're doing any kind of repair work, you always use epoxy because I just, I don't buy into that. So, I mean, the, I guess the one thing that I always think about is, you know, back 30, 40, 50 years ago, and even now, even currently, almost every single production boat is made with polyester resin. Almost every one. You go back 20, 30, 40 years, every single one, except for, you know, back in that time, high six, seven figure boats, they were all built with polyester resin. When you get into that really, really high end, then you know, they might be using vinyl ester or, or epoxy in places, maybe even on the whole hull. But I would say 98 to 99 percent of all boats that are built out there, even 40, 50 years ago, that are still going strong today, were built with polyester resin. There's nothing wrong with it. There's just nothing wrong with it. <laughs> All right, now that I got that off my chest. So for wetting out the fiberglass, I am, yeah, duh, going to be using polyester resin. And my resin of choice is this. It's the laminating polyester resin from Total Boat. Uh, it just, it works very well. I've been using this for years. I've never had it backfire on me. It's always consistent. It just works. And laminating, again, but I touched on here a minute ago, I'll be able to come back at it a day to a week later and just pick up right where I left off if I have to. Now, for creating the fillets, uh, I could absolutely take the same polyester resin, you know, for uh, wetting out the glass, thicken it with silica. You've seen me do that quite a bit over the past uh, couple of months. Uh, but for this type of application of creating the fillets, uh, you know, and for the amount of fillets that I need to create, there's another product out there that's already pre-thickened and ready to go, and it's polyester-based. And in my opinion, there's no point in trying to recreate the wheel. So what I'm going to be using for all the fillets is going to be the structural repair putty. Now this is a, it's, it's a pre-thickened polyester resin that has milled glass fibers already mixed into it. And it's the right consistency. It's not going to sag on me. It's not going to run away. 
it's just it's already pre-mixed and, and ready to go. The only thing I have to do is add the, the catalyst, uh, which is the same catalyst that you use for the laminating polyresin, which is MEC or methyl ethyl ketone with peroxide. Not to be confused with methyl ethyl ketone, the cleaner. <laughs> Two very, very different things. However, it has been quite a while since I have used this. And polyester, I mean, just like most other things, it does have a shelf life. So before I start mixing up uh, quantities of this and slathering it all over the transom, I want to make sure that it hasn't gotten, gotten old on me and it's still going to do what I need it to do. So I'm going to give this a good stir here for a few minutes and then I'm going to mix up a small batch and let it, uh, let it cook overnight just to make sure that it's going to set up and do exactly what, uh, what it's supposed to do. So this stuff gets catalyzed at the same ratio as regular polyester resin. Uh, generally, you want to catalyze it between 1 and 2% hardener to resin. Now, in small batches, that's not always real easy to, to measure out. Well, I mean, you can always measure it out, I guess. Uh, for me, it gets a little bit easier in larger volumes because then you can use something like this for dispensing your hardener. So what I'm going to do here, just because I don't want to waste a bunch of material, I'm going to throw in two ounces a material into the bottom of the cup and then on the on the instructions here they say for uh, for a hundred grams of resin or of the uh, the material here which I'm guessing equates to roughly one ounce of material so for 100 grams you're going to use 14 drops that'll catalyze it around one percent so I'm going to put in roughly two ounces into this cup and then I'm actually going to because my little dispensing bottle here doesn't go down into that small of increments, I'm actually going to have to go drop by drop. So I'll be putting in 28 to 30 drops of hardener for two ounces of this material. So now I'm going to stir this very well for probably two or three minutes. Now again, the only reason I'm doing this little test is just to make sure that this material hasn't gotten old on me. And the way it's reacting, I suspect it's going to be just fine. But like I said, better safe than sorry. So I'm just going to take this drop it onto some scrap kusa. Now I'm going to spread this lengthwise. I'm going to have one end that's going to be thick and I'm going to spread it right down to hardly any, anything because I want to make sure that, you, that it you know, also it cures while it's thick, but I want to make sure that it also cures while it's still in a thin, thin layer. So shortly after laying out that little test sample of the, the structural putty, I, I got a little bit of a surprise. This was back on Wednesday afternoon. Now, the siding for the addition, which wasn't originally supposed to be coming in until late Friday afternoon, had come in early and they had delivered. So I got a hold of my builder to let them know. And after looking at the forecast for the next seven days, we pretty much concluded that it would be best to try and get this knocked out sooner rather than later. Uh, within the next six, seven days, we're supposed to be getting upwards of another two feet of additional snow. And that just makes everything more difficult. That means that I'm going to have a lot more time having to re-clear this area again. And then for them having to, you know, handle the materials and get all this stuff with that much snow on the ground with ladders, it's just more work than it was worth. So we, we pretty much decided that it would be best to try and get this knocked out on, th for them to try and get this knocked out Thursday and Friday of this week before all that hits. And that's pretty much what they did. So they were able to get the back and the sides uh, basically covered, as well as get the door trimmed out and that back door installed. But what they are on hold with now are, is the front of the building where the windows are supposed to be. And you know, that's all right, it is what it is. But I will say, I'm going to be pretty excited when those windows actually come in, we can finally get the building 100% of the shell finished. Yeah, I think it's pretty safe to say that when that happens, we're having a hell of a party out here. So it has been a couple of days now and the crew just left. They have pretty much worked themselves out of work. Uh, at this point, they're on hold until the windows come in on the, on the front of the addition here until I think that's like the end of June, early July. So between, from now until then, there really shouldn't be any more interruptions, no more schedules I need to work around. So that'll be kind of nice. Now, unfortunately, that also means that as of right now, it is Friday afternoon, which means it's the end of the week and I've, I'm kind of out of time for the week. Now, before I close this out, I want to do a quick follow up on the, the structural putty that I laid up and verdict is cured up. We're in good shape and uh, it's going to work out just fine. And with that said, I'm actually pretty happy with where things are at for this week. The addition is buttoned up. Everything's on hold now for the next, what, two, three months. All the materials for the transom as well as the transom itself, everything is sanded, prepped, cleaned and ready to go. So going into next week then, uh, we're, we're stinking the joint up. We are going to be laying all of this glass and closing that chapter on the transom, moving on to the next thing. 
Now, kind of one thing I'm actually curious about to see is how well these air scrubbers, you can't see it, it's out of frame, but I've got one big air scrubber here as well as one back behind the Bertram. Supposedly these are supposed to filter out all of the, the, the polyester fumes, so I don't know, we'll see. This is going to be the first big workout that those uh, things have had here in the shop, so I guess we'll let you know how well they work, right? <laughs> So with that said, I think this is going to be a good place to end the video for this week. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the no notification bell so you get notifications every time we put out videos, which is every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Central. If you have any questions, comments, please uh, leave those down below. I will do my best to follow up with you. And as always, I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. And I will see you next Sunday. This has been a Boatworks Today Projection.